Hello and welcome to the Year 12 Parent Information Evening. My name's Nick Fall, Head Teacher. In a moment, you're going to hear from Ms. Jackson, Deputy Head, and Mr. McAdam, Academic Head of Year. And they're going to tell you a little bit about the ways in which we seek to support our students here at Holia. But before that happens, I wanted to take an opportunity to formally welcome you to parents to the school and hope and express my hope that your sons and daughters are enjoying those vital first few weeks at school. Students certainly have made a positive impression on us. We know it's not been easy to restart education after such an unusual period of time, but the current new generation of holistic formers are really starting to impress us. So please um, pass on to your sons and daughters our admiration for how they've started their careers with us. One thing I want to stress before I hand over to my colleagues is how important early, timely communication between home and school is. It makes our work so much easier if you do let us know if you're worried about something or you feel your sons and daughters have got concerns because then we can work together to fix any problems. Uh, so please be assured we are here to help and to make the most of that considerable potential all new Holier students have. So I'm going to pass on to my colleagues now, but thank you for taking the time to log on. And as always, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Welcome to Holier School, to our Year 12 information presentation. This presentation will be delivered by Ms. Claire Jackson, our Deputy Head, and by myself, Mr. Chris McAdam, Academic Head of Year 12. Key information to be covered is as follows. New beginnings, three-way partnership, mentors, key school policies, student effort, GCSE grades, and our extracurricular programme. Here at Holier School, we believe in a three-way partnership between the school itself, students, and parents. We need to ensure that parents really understand what students' aspirations are and ultimately, as teachers and as support staff, we need to understand those goals as well. It's important for students to realise how they're going to achieve those goals. Thus, the three components are really important in every student's success. New beginnings. Our GCSE results have come and gone now. There's been a period of reflection over the last few months, I'm sure, as well. What we want to see is that students bring about good learning habits into their A-level and IB programmes. Any bad habits that were established during GCSEs or any bad habits that may have formed over our lockdown period, we want to try and eliminate those as quickly as possible. So it really is a fresh start for all of our students. So what is expected of students? Attendance should be high at all times, and this will be monitored throughout the year as well as students' punctuality to lessons and, of course, their attitude to learning. We want students at Holier to be engaged, committed, and really see the purpose and the benefits of the work that is being set for them. Of course, they must communicate, ask for help where necessary from subject teachers or from different support staff throughout the school. Later on in this presentation, I'll highlight some really important figures throughout the school where students can seek support should they need it. As teachers, we will lead learning. We will prepare lessons professionally. We will ensure that students are challenged, tested, and that ultimately they enjoy the lessons that they participate in. We will assess students throughout the year and we will feed back to make sure that students truly understand what mistakes they've made, how those mistakes can be corrected, in order for future assessments to be more successful. We support students academically, but also in a much wider sense. Again, I'll explain later in our presentation who our wider support team is. Ultimately, our job, as well as students communicating with us, is to communicate efficiently with you. As parents, communicate with our colleagues and communicate with students to really help them on their academic journey. Parents, we ask that you communicate with us as much as possible, whether it be through myself, 
as academic head of year, through Ms Jackson as our deputy head, through our different support staff that we have in school, or in contact with subject teachers. So please do feel that you can communicate with the school as much as possible in order to best support your sons or your daughters. Attend and participate in parents' evenings and school events. Uh, there's lots of charity events throughout the year uh, that students may come home asking for ideas in which families can contribute to. And we ask that you participate in those again to help with your son or daughter's development. What are our aims for year 12? As so part of the mentoring program, we have several aims and there's a real purpose behind what we do in each mentor session. We want to build a sense of community among peers. We want students to make excellent academic progress. We want them to prepare for life after Holier as well. So throughout the year, there'll be lots of opportunities for students to engage with activities that aren't necessarily to do with their subject that they undertake. Lots of careers events occur throughout the year as well. Um, so we ask that students start to think about their careers in year 12 and start to engage with uh, employability sessions, skill sessions uh, and other events that will help them in the future. During mentor time, the mentors have a key role to play in that they will hold one to ones with students and they will ask them how their academic journey is going. They will be concerned as well for their welfare and they will want to know that students feel safe and secure here at Holier. So the mentoring programme is very important for a student's development. And again, it's a good avenue for mentors to perhaps make contact home with parents um, as and when required. These are the aims of the autumn term of our mentor programme. So as mentioned before, we want to build a sense of community. But students need to also think about their aspirational academic targets. Where are their strengths and weaknesses academically? And also, how are they going to achieve the goals that they set? Study time is very important during Key Stage 5. In the transition from GCSE to A-level, students will quickly realise that they have study periods on their timetable. We need to develop or understand how exactly to use that study time. Whilst teachers will give ideas to students as to how to best utilise that time, students are really encouraged to think about how to independently study and what is in their best interests during those study periods. Is it to prioritise a specific subject that they're struggling in? Is it to take some time to explore career opportunities. Again, those are things for students to take independence and control of. In your school, there's a dress code to be adhered to. Clothes should be smart, safe and appropriate to professional working environment. The below list is an example of unacceptable clothes. Fashionable torn clothing, short skirts, outdoor coats, etc. If students are unsure, they should really just bear in mind that we're trying to achieve a professional working environment. Extreme forms of hair colour and appearance are also not acceptable. As well as this, jewellery needs to be discreet and appropriate to our professional working environment. Staff are going to monitor the standards of appearance of students and students really shouldn't be shocked if they're asked to go home and change if they fail to adhere to any of these rules. As mentioned previously, students at Key Stage 5 have a lot of study time and therefore need to think how they best plan their time efficiently. Here's an example of a study plan which incorporates a student's study time, social time, maybe work that they partake in, extracurricular activities and downtime as well. We ask that students really think about planning their time efficiently and perhaps creating a study plan like the one shown. 
behaviour for learning expectations. Student attendance should be as high as possible. There's a direct correlation between student attendance and their academic success. Holidays shouldn't be requested during term time. Punctuality levels should always be excellent. And as mentioned pre previously, students should come to lessons with the correct attitude, uh, ready to engage, ready to learn in those lessons. Here at Holier School, we support students in lots of different ways. Mentors support students through group sessions each morning and also on a one-to-one -one basis. So any academic concerns, any wider issues that they may be having in school can be shared with their mentors. The teachers of all of our subjects here, of course, will offer subject specific support. I wanted to draw your attention to the wider network that we have within school. Ms Martin and her team work with special educational needs. Ms Sinfield leads our gifted and talented programme. Ms Cornwall is our school counsellor. She can be contacted by email, uh, via text message or simply in person. Mrs Mason is our safeguarding officer. We have a, a peer mentor support team and an education welfare office and attendance team within the school as well. The roles of each of these support networks is ultimately to ensure that students are as successful as possible at Holier academically, but also in their personal development as well. If your son or daughter is planning to be absent from school, uh, we ask that you let our office know. There's a phone number uh, as listed. There are examples there of unplanned absences, planned absences, and where absent, re absent requests can be made by parents as well. Uh, we simply ask that uh, st students are provided with the correct documentation in order to account for any absences within school. Our motto here at Holier School is Summa Patamus, to aim for the highest. Whilst we want students to develop academically, uh, we have an interest in their personal development, in their career aspirations as well. So our duty for students at year 12 is to ensure that they have the employability skills, the academic skill set, and some knowledge on what future careers they might embark upon as well. Thank you, Mr McAdam. Um, Ms McAdam is now handing over to Claire Jackson, Deputy Head Teacher. I'm going to talk a little bit about what assessment looks like at whole year, as it may be a little bit different from the feeder schools that our students have arrived from. So just to clarify that this academic year, a little bit different, but we will be having three assessment reports, two summaries and one full report with a written comment later on this year. We will be hosting two parents' evenings, the Year 12 Virtual Parents' Evening on the 1st of December for both A-Level and IB students, and a second Virtual Parents' Evening later on the year. The Year 12 A-Level Parents' Evening will be taking place on the 23rd of March, and the IB Parents' Evening on the 29th of June. We will be providing you with further details on how our parents' evenings are going to look in due course. So Mr McAdam has spoken a little bit about effort and the correlation of effort and how it's linked to achievement. So what is effort? How do we clarify effort here at Holia? So effort's clear set of descriptors and criteria to measure effort here at Holia for the students to work towards and for staff and parents to refer to. Increased effort means that students are more likely to make progress, which in turn increases their chances of achievement. We use the terms outstanding, good, requires improvement and requires significant improvement in relation to effort. And that in turn is split into in-class effort and out-of-class effort. Doing enough is not OK. We encourage students to stretch and challenge themselves in all subjects to aim for the. An outstanding student will demonstrate identified criteria and identified behaviours consistently. Good students will demonstrate them often. 
Students requiring improvements in their efforts will sometimes demonstrate these behaviours and students requiring significant improvements in their efforts will rarely demonstrate. Here are some of the criteria that we look for in outstanding students. Alongside the effort, we also track students' progress with grades. We use Go for Schools, which is an electronic markbook. And here's an exemplar of what the markbook looks like. Within Go for Schools, we will have three targets. We will have the target grade, the predicted grade of a student and the actual grade. So how do we create students' target grades? We will use the GCSE mean score of students and create an average of students' achievement at GCSE. On screen now is an example of how we will calculate a student's mean score. For example, if student A achieved the following GCSE results in summer 2019, a student, we would count up their point score and we will divide it by eight, the number of GCSEs that this student has taken. This gives us an average point score of 5.63. On this screen, it will show you that if a student has achieved mostly sixes and fives, the A-level grade expectation per subject is a B grade. If a student has achieved mostly grades eight and nine, an A level a student would be aiming for an A star. And conversely, if a student achieved a five or a four or lower, we'd be looking at an A level grade expectation of around a C. The IB aspirational point score is calculated in the same way. If students achieving grades eight and nine, the expectation will be a IB total points of 38 plus. Students achieving between grades five and six will be looking for a point score of 30. And students achieving grades fours and fives at GCSE will be looking for an IB point score of 20. Progression into year 13 is going to look slightly different this year. We have no AS qualifications to be sat in the summer of 2021. Students have started their A-levels on a programme of four A-levels. and Following the initial assessment in October and again following the full assessment in May, students will have the opportunity to meet with their mentors or members of senior leadership to discuss um, changing to a three A-level programme, ensuring that they have made the correct choices for their university and work aspirations. Here at Holia, students can become involved in a variety of extracurricular activities. There's the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, several charity days that take place throughout the year. There's our famous Sheet Week, which takes place the week before half term. And there are a variety of sports and clubs going on throughout the school week. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to myself and Mr McAdam today. Should you have any questions or queries, please do not hesitate to get back in touch with us. Thank you.